everyone. In just a second, I'm going to be introducing author Eliza Maxwell, and her newest book is called The Widow's Watcher, and it is so good, coming out this week. And um, it is her fourth book. Um, I The story, I it's sad, but then, you know, you cry, but then you laugh, and then when it ended, I cried again, but I just, I really fell into the story. I cannot wait to tell, talk to her about, you know, how she came up with it. It's, it's truly amazing. And, um, it's just one of those really kind of feel good fiction books that, you know, that we all love. So everyone here is Eliza. <laughs> everyone. I am so excited because I'm speaking with author Eliza Maxwell and her book that is coming out this week that she is holding, she's going to hold up for us, is The Widow's Watcher. I knew I was going to love this cover, Eliza. I mean, just seeing it on my, you know, when you see it on your phone, it's just not the same because I can't see the colors, but... Uh, it's one of my favorite covers so far, without I, a doubt. You know what? It is one of my favorite covers. <laughs> because I love the way they did the with her in the red coat against that yeah. blue. I mean, you know, I know they put a lot of thought into these covers. I mean, They that, do. They do. There's a lot of back and forth um, and, and tweaking and things like that. And they do a fantastic job. I've had the same cover designer um, do all of my Lake Union books, and he's he's done a fantastic job. But um, luckily, they do give us a, some some an opportunity for some feedback. So if there's something that we're like, well, let's try a blue coat, or a you know, they, they'll oftentimes go back to the drawing board and kind of tweak things for us and come back. Um, and and I was hugely happy with this one. Well, I want to give a shout out to those Lake Union people on their covers because I have interviewed a lot of them. And I mean, their game within the last two years, they have stepped up their cover game like crazy. Okay. Their and covers they, are beautiful. They really, beautiful. They, they are. I, they're one of my favorite cover people. They really are. Absolutely. Like every book that I read a Lake Union and I look back at the cover while I'm reading it and I'm just like, oh. You know, if I have the physical yeah. copy, I just keep looking at the cover and I'm like, wow, they really have stepped their game up. So we want to shout out to those people because it is a tough thing. I know it's tough. And to capture the story and this story with that, I mean, it is so perfect. And it I is. love it this is. book so much, Eliza. I was trying to describe it because I do a pre-video a pre before we talk, like an mm -hmm. intro. And I was like, I always try to describe it. I'm like, okay, so I cried and then I laughed and then I cried and then I laughed a little more and then, and then it ended and I cried. So. Well, I'm glad. I mean, I hate, that always makes me feel like a terrible person to say, well, I'm glad you cried. No, but, uh, no. you know, when I wrote that book, it, um, it made me cry almost every time I did a read through for it. And it wasn't really intentional. I don't sit down and think, I just really want to make people cry. I want to collect <laughs> those tears and carry them in a little bottle around my neck. No, no, that's, I, I mean, that's not the way it works. But sometimes um, the story comes to you and it's just, it's just an emotional one. And, and the difficult part at times is trying to almost dial that back because you don't, want to overwhelm the reader um but that this is just the way the story showed up at that particular well, point in time yeah and i love the way you fed it to us you know it Thank wasn't you. like you opened up the book and you're like boom this is what happened to jenna this is what happened to lars this is what mm -hmm. i mean the way that we get to find out as the book goes I, that takes so much talent like as i'm reading it i'm like Oh, my God, she's such a genius. Oh, my gosh. She's such a, every time I hit a point, I'm like, oh, that was done so well. And so do you write, like, do you outline that out like that so that you're, you know, revealing well, the story? At, like, yes, that? now I do. Um, my first, my first book, my first novel, um, which was actually self-published originally, um, and then after I self-published, Lake Union came to me at that point and then re-released it after that with some editing and, and, and things like that. But um, it, with that book, I did not outline. I just sort of figured it out along the way. But the, the, the end result of that is that I ended up needing to rewrite it three or four times before 
before I was happy with it. So um, I have learned since then <laughs> that it's, a, it's more work on the front end to outline um, before I sit down and get the first draft going. But in the end, it makes it um, an easier process for me. And and I don't get so lost in the woods. I sort of, um, I if I have signposts, mm-hmm. then um, then I know where I'm going next. And, and yeah, I do tend to, because I, I, I was a reader first. I'm still a reader, obviously. Right. But um, I don't remember, I don't remember thinking my, a lot of people say they knew their entire lives they wanted to be a writer. I knew that I loved books, but it never occurred to me until I was a little bit older Hey, maybe I could try my hand at this. It just, I, I went to college. I was too practical to do, um, a creative degree. I would have loved to, um, but I, I, I needed a, a, a skill, <laughs> you know, something that I could, I, I just personally, that's, that's the kind of person that I am. Um, I like security and I like, um, a safety net and, and so much of writing with the hope of publishing is um, to sort of take your chances, do the best you can, and and um, and that's that wasn't me. So anyway, um, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> what, what what were we talking about? To begin with? Um, well, so the the outlining, right? Uh, it, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. No, Lost that's it. okay because no, absolutely because it's. I've heard that from so many authors because as a new writer, they're like, I can do this because as readers, we're like, oh, this is simple. I never think that. But you know what I mean? Before I started to really read, you know, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, you just need to come up with a story. No big deal. Sure. Come up with a story. <laughs> sure. You know? Well, absolutely. And, and I think that everybody can do it. Um, but I do think that um, it's a lot more work than we realize before. It, it's almost like... Like, before you have children, um, you think you know what <laughs> yeah. how, what kind of parent you're going to be, and you think you know how you would handle situations and things like that, and you really don't. And then uh, you have kids, and you're like, I had no idea. I, 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 and I, I regret saying some of the things that I said, but um, and, and writing a book is sort of like that. You know, you, there, there are just things along the way that you get um, surprised by, and and the business end of things as well, and, and not like publishing business end, but the um, the planning of the book. So as 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 a writer, I wanted to write a book that, and I. I I still, every book I write, I want to write a book that I, as a reader, would um, enjoy. So um, it's sort of a partnership between the writer side of me and the reader side of me. And I just keep my fingers crossed that there are other readers out there that are the same type of readers. Because not every book is going to to find a connection, um, without a doubt. You can never write a book that's going to appeal to everyone. Um, but hopefully there are enough people out there that are the same type of readers that I am that that I can pull that off hopefully and I I love um when I was younger when I just like dive into a book and Mm -hmm. then get so connected and I got so connected to Jenna I mean not just as a mom I mean of course you take us down that journey of her as a mom and and those are where that's where the tears come in you know Mm -hmm. but absolutely you know but I but we love reading stories like that because we kind of get lost in it and Mm -hmm. okay so my favorite I don't think this is a spoiler I don't do spoilers no, I understand. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a new book. So it's like, usually if it's an older book, I can look back and see what people are saying. And then I know yeah. where my stop point is. <laughs> but we, but this book's just coming out. But The Voice of Cassie. Oh. How did you do that? Like, Wasn't that amazing? Uh, I mean, I, not to be like, oh, pat myself on the back. No. The, the funny thing about this book, and, and I've, I've said this before, um, and I'll probably say it again. Jenna was not based on me. She's, she's not a Mary Sue. She's not, she's not me. Um, but there is more of me there than I think there are bits and pieces of me there more so than in any other character I've ever written. And the funny thing about Cassie, my daughter is only, um, eight years old Mm -hmm. and Cassie was 16, 17 teenager. Um, 
It's her oldest daughter for everybody. It's yes. Um, and, and, and Cassie is what I imagine my daughter will be at that point mm-hmm. in time. I can see more. I can see so much of my daughter in the way Cassie ended up coming together. I can hear her voice saying those things in like that, that, that teenagery mom kind of tone. Um, <laughs> and I, 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 I hate to do that to my daughter. She's a wonderful child. And, and I love Cassie. But Cassie was one of my favorite things to write. Yeah. And it's, it's not, um, you know, I have two daughters and they're in their twenties now. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the one is a mom already, but yeah. I, it's like, I, I don't think that you didn't do her. I don't think that you made her bratty, you know, I think you made her very real because that is, and as a daughter, (laughs) because we are daughters, like that's how I was. And my mom passed away in 2011, Oh, but I do the opposite. So Mm -hmm. like I talk to her as if she's right there. And if, and then in my head, like I hear her in different things, and and sometimes you know, even if I'm alone, probably out loud, I'm like, I know, I know, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard that. I know, I understand. Like, and especially now that I'm a grandma, you know, yeah. and my mom was a grandma, and like, so there are different things that I can connect. So I love that you did that. I thought that was a brilliant part of the book. I, I never, think it's such I never a big read relationship. anything like that. I n- never read anything like that. And I like enjoyed that. So that's why I said with the the crying and the laughing and the, the tears were just, you know, like, cause I'm hormonal and I'm, I get connected to mothers well, and, you know, that's <laughs> good. And that's okay. And, and really, it's a huge part of our lives, our relationships yes. with our mothers, um, whether we have daughters or not. Right. Um, Right. And it's it's an ironic thing to have that that relationship flip flop on you once you have a daughter. But even if you don't have a daughter, no. that you can that relationship with your mother is such such a big part of what makes us who we are, yeah. um, or or the person who fills that role for us. And 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 it's a it's a powerful relationship, and it's not always a pretty one, right. um, but. But it was, it's a big part of who I am and, and who I think a lot of women are. And it was it was a lot of fun to be able to write that relationship. Um, and knowing, that you, especially without having a teenage daughter, um, and, and sort of imagining her and her um, her character traits in, yeah. in a teenager. And she so comes um, out. Like, her personality is so Yeah, cool. absolutely. But uh, like I said, you were a teenage daughter, so it's almost like that, too. Yeah. You know, you can almost, but like... <laughs> I was, and I, I gave my mom a very hard time, mm-hmm. um, which I've, I've since apologized for. I, I've called her on a, on numerous occasions since having kids and said, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had no idea. But, um, she's forgiven me, though. She's I have uh, had those moments with my children where they apologize. Yeah. But, but you know what? Sometimes my daughter gets like, well, I'm going to do this better. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And she's listening to this. I so, hope you so, do. Me too. I'm like, you, you, you go. You do it better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to read my favorite quote. Now, you know, we didn't give too much of the story away, but um, Jenna happens upon, in, in circumstances, happens upon a man named Lars, an older mm-hmm. man. And because of, you know, things that happen in her life, her and this man develop a very cool relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't want to say too much, but I do want to give this quote because I think that when I read it, I was like, ooh, this kind of just takes the whole book. And it's not a spoiler, but it kind of just lets everybody know, like, what this story embodies. So she had no one at all. There was only him, an old man with a broken heart. And I was like, oh, yes. Yes, she did. And it was just like, oh, but I loved her. And I, I just feel like this book is just going to, it's going to do so well for you. Like, Thank you. I re- and, I, and I did go back. I mean, I looked at your other books and I was like, okay, <laughs> she didn't write this many books in 2017. So is that kind of when you hooked up with Lake Union and then they re-released them for you? Uh-huh. Well, I, well, I, I, the, the first book was The, the Grave Tender mm-hmm. and, um, they found me, like I said, they found me as I was after I self published. Awesome. They find you. It was amazing. I love that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to take a quick drink here. I've got it. My kids brought home a summer cold. And so my throat's been a little scratchy. Oh, but. go ahead. No problem. 
a lot of women bring, drink tea. Like if I interview somebody in England, they're always drinking. They have their own <laughs> pots and they just keep pouring tea and drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm that way with coffee most of the time, but yeah, uh, too. coffee is, is my saving grace. But, um, okay, so the first book was The Grape Tender and it was self-published and, um, I, it was, you know, it, reasonably successful for a self-published book um and then they fit they found me after i did i ran a, an ad with bookbub mm-hmm. re-released it at that point um i i had it, and we signed a two-book contract so they re-released the grape tender and then i started fresh like that week with a book for them for the 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 second book in that contract and um that turned out to be the unremembered girl mm. But since they've, since we've signed with Lake Union, it's pretty much been book, book, book. And, um, because I didn't have the Unremembered Girl, I had like an idea, like a two sentence sort of idea. So it was about a six month process. And that's another good thing about Lake Union is they won't stop you from releasing books quickly. I think the, the publishing it, I remember when I was growing up, I, like I said, I was always a big reader, and I remember having to wait a full year oh, for yeah. the. No, those they're books. always, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I talk to a lot of authors, and I'll say, like, what are you working on next? And they're like, well, I'm done with that, but we got to wait till next May. I mean, and it'll be like, really? We got to wait till May 19 to be able to, so, like, because their publishers do have them on a book a year. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do love about Lake Union is that you don't have to do that. If you have a book, yeah, and if you write a book a year, they're happy to, to keep right. that schedule for you, but um, if you're willing to write um, two books a year, they'll release two books a year, so um, awesome. luckily, it's and it's been a pretty constant thing, but it, it, it it's almost been like you're holding your breath, um, and you don't really want to breathe out because you... You, you, you know, this is, this is, for a lot of people, is a dream come true, right. to be able to... to to do this for a living and have someone back you up the way Lake Union does because um, they're they're really uh, in our corner as far as the writers go. Um, It's just like the thing with the covers. Um, There are a lot of stories about authors with traditionally published um, houses that just don't have any um, say-so in what their covers end up looking like. And then they've gone out of their way to give us a voice in that process. So they'll send us, um, you know, three different mock-ups to choose from and, and let them know feedback. And if we don't like any of them, we'll let them know and they'll, they'll go back to the drawing board. But, um, it's, it's been an amazing experience and a lot of luck, um, to, to, to get, to get to that point. And I don't discount the luck, um, at all, but, but it's, it's, it like, you, you don't want to, um, sneeze or anything and, and have her blow all the cards off the board. So, so if they're willing to put out two books a year, I'm willing to write two books a year. So, so it's, it's been a pretty, pretty constant That's thing awesome. since then. So, okay. So this one's coming out this week at the end mm-hmm. of May. Uh, so does that mean that probably by the end of the year we'll get another um, I think it's just over the edge into next year when the next one is scheduled. Um, I need to double check, but I think it might be January or February. Um, And then uh, there will be another one. There should be another one before the end of the year, um, before the end of next year. So two more on the horizon, and then we'll see what happens after that. But um, I think of all of the ones so far, this this one, the widow's watcher, is probably. I know you're not supposed to pick a favorite, um, but it's probably my favorite. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. I but. think you can. You can. They're like book babies. You can. Yeah. Them now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, if they're listening, I wouldn't say that. But that's they're not true. Listening. That's true. But I, you know where to find me. Okay. So when that one comes out at the end of the, you know, before it comes out, mm-hmm. like I want to read it at first again. Like, <laughs> well, I'm glad we'll you it. enjoyed it. And then we'll uh, put it out, you know, the same way. But let's show everybody before I let you go. I'm going to have all of Eliza's links underneath here. Show the cover again for everybody. Because okay. I always like showing it at the end again because it's so awesome. Let me see the binding, the, the side. Binding. Oh, yes. 
because you see on Instagram, people make art out of these books. Of beautiful, art. beautiful photographs. Yes, and this is one I can I cannot wait till they get their hands on it because they're going to make such pretty pictures with this. So I'm always so impressed. I, I see the photographs. And I'm like, that's gorgeous. Did you ever see the one who does her nails? Yes. Her nails in the color. Oh my god. I know, right? And if I take pictures, it's got dirty dishes in the background and things You're like, like that. You're like, let them do it. I, I always think I'm going to do that, and then I'm like, I, you know what? That's their thing. Let them it's do that. It's a wonderful job. They're way so. more artistic than I am. But <laughs> I'm going to have all of Eliza's link. I'm going to have the Amazon link that you can push the one button. You can get it on Kindle, but then you Thank can go, you. and if you want to have it in two days, uh, you can click that button and get it and I will have your website I love your website it's oh crazy. thank you I love a good website I'm always someone who like <laughs> appreciates I go on there I'm like oh my god there's so much work done I mean oh you can see all of her books and you know like the stories behind the books I love that so thank you yeah so anyway it was so nice to meet you me too I, yeah this was I, a lot of fun yeah and I cannot wait for your next book so thank you know where you. to find me we won't we won't say goodbye because you know you know where to find okay. me <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day, Eliza. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for watching, everyone. Oh, wasn't she sweet? What a sweetheart. I love her. And guys, if you read this book, seriously. I mean, we didn't dive into it too much because you can't. Because everything is kind of a spoiler. And I wanted you guys to read it the way I got to read it. And um, the story is beautiful. What a storyteller she is. And I see big things for her. And I'm so happy I got to know her. So like I said, all of her links are going to be listed below. Thank you for watching, everyone.